When I watch runners on the track, it feels like the race is a short drama that ends in just a few seconds. Think about it. The sound of the gun sends electricity through the body. The ground vibrates under their feet. And within moments, someone becomes the winner. To an outsider, it may just look like the athletes are moving their arms and legs fast. But the real story lies much deeper. In truth, every step is like a battle. It's not just a race, but a test of coordination between the body and the muscles. Acceleration, that initial burst of speed, is the hardest part. Imagine spending 70% of your total energy in just a few seconds. That's what splinters do. And that's why, if there's even the slightest mistiming at the start, or too much force in a single step, the entire outcome of the race can change. To me, this is the moment where science and human capability come together. Every time I see a sprinter explode out of the blocks, I realize this isn't just about speed. It's the perfect synchronization of body, mind and timing. When I stand on the track and watch sprinters burst out of the blocks, it feels like every step is a small battle. The energy spent in the first few moments becomes the main reason for fatigue at the end of the race. In other words, if you don't use your energy efficiently in those initial seconds, the entire outcome of the race can change. Think about it. The first step out of the blocks is the long Longest and most crucial. As the sprinter picks up speed, the ground contact time with each step keeps getting shorter. During this phase, some sprinters manage to apply force to the ground with almost perfect timing in every stride. The legs and muscles coordinate so precisely that it feels like the body itself decides when and how much force to apply. But because of the heat and pressure of the race, even elite athletes sometimes get their timing wrong. In an attempt to push harder out of the blocks, they end up applying too much force with each step. The result shows up instantly. Tension builds up in the body, energy drains faster, and acceleration slows down. From my perspective, this is the moment when experience and self-control truly make the difference. When a sprinter runs at their top speed, it's anything but easy. It's a constant challenge. Every second, their feet hit and leave the ground multiple times. In that incredibly short contact, sometimes less than one tenth of a second, they have to stop their body from falling and instantly push themselves upward again. Now think about it. At such high speeds, muscles alone can't generate force that quickly. That's where the Achilles tendon comes into play. I like to think of the tendon as a rubber band. The moment the foot hits the ground, it stretches and stores energy, just like a rubber band being pulled. Then, as it recoils, it releases that stored power, pushing the runner upward and forward. This means the muscles don't have to produce full force on every step. With the tendon's help, the body becomes faster and more powerful. During this phase, the sprinter just needs to maintain leg stiffness, keeping the legs firm enough for the tendon to do its job efficiently, while the muscles recharge for the next stride. The problem begins when runners start to over push. If they press too hard into the ground, the tendon's stored energy isn't used effectively. Tension builds up in the body and speed starts to drop. In my view, this is the skill that truly shows how perfectly the mind and body must work together. From the outside, it might look like a runner is just running fast or slow. But in reality, it's the art of timing, tendon, muscle and movement that creates the real difference in a race.